Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be doing something very, very exciting by announcing the winner of the Grand Line Review Jolly Roger Contest. Before we get to that though, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you wonderful people who entered the contest, and I would now like to take some time to showcase your entries before we reveal our ultimate winner. I'm going to commence things with the very first entry I received from the one and only Tag Terror 11, who went for the very classic straw hat skull, although the hat itself is rather funkily tipped on the side of the skull. Very very, very classy. And the sword and the microphone replacing the traditional crossbones is a nice touch as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Tag Terror. Moving on, we have Royal Squid who submitted this suave as hell logo, which I really like actually. The only issue is I don't think I'm quite cool enough to wear this Jolly Roger properly. I'm far, far too awkward. And you know what, maybe it would work if I always say wore a tuxedo while recording, but that doesn't always happen. However, I do appreciate the addition of the comedy and drama masks because I work in theater, so that's fun. All in all, very, very cool. Now here we have Marcus Hollis. Lots of great simplicity happening here with each of the letters G, L, and R being highlighted in a different color. And I also quite enjoy that the straw hat is just, you know, casually dangling off a bone there. Very nicely done, sir. But next up is an entry from the Square Tuna who has included a lot of nice little one piece nods here. There's a Shanks like scar across the skull in the shape of the red line. And the crossbones are made up of Zora's Wadawichi Monji. And there's even a feather from Doflamingo, which according to Sir Tuna, doubles as a writer's quill for me to write my scripts and such. Although the coolest part is this tiny detail on the tip of the quill where it's dripping yellow ink, indicating that it was responsible for writing Grand Line Review on the bottom. So thank you so, so much for the thought you put into this, Mr. Tuna. Speaking of thought, this entry from JC not applies quite a bit of that, with a lovely monochrome aesthetic and a fantastic texture crafted from the various lines behind the skull. Oh, and smack bang in the middle of the skull appears to be a log pose, which is nice and unique. All in all, solid piece of graphic design there. But now I'd like to interrupt the world of computer generated work to highlight some of the hand drawn entries I received. The first classic contender being Patrick Whipple, who has gone to a lot of trouble to apply some great shading around the logo itself, as well as a really nice arrangement of the GLR letters intermingling there. Game of Freak also submitted a hand-drawn entry with a frame surrounding the skull, and you know the skull itself is quite funky with those cracks in it. I very much enjoy the imperfect nature of it. It feels nice and worn. And last up for the classical arts is Robert from Sweden, who has produced this Jolly Roger that very much evokes the actual Golden Age of Piracy, but with a modern flair of color representing the Grand Line and the Red Line. Plus there's even a sneaky sneaky YouTube play button in the eye, which is just glorious. Transitioning slowly back into the digital world, we have an entry from Just Get Off Hater, who sent in his entry with but a single message, noting that the black lines were a mistake. Meanwhile, Lynx Mara here has gone for a brook heavy motif, using his skull as a Jolly Roger, which is a fun idea, as well as his Shiko Mizue and Zora's Bodoichi Monji as the crossbones. I do indeed enjoy swords. But moving on to our first and only combination entry, we have this epic Jolly Roger from Joe Lewis and Aaron Spa. And I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your last name, Aaron. Unfortunately, I am but a foolish Australian. But this is very, very cool. It evokes a sort of Japanese Game of Thronesy style feel. And we also should not ignore that the kanji for C is written on the book below. Although I'm very sorry to say that I'm not quite sure what the hiragana word is up the top. I know it reads as Kirisu, but my Japanese is pretty pathetic. So please feel free to let me know in the comments. Next up is Matthew Ubre, delivering a nice nice and simple Jolly Roger with a rendering of my hair on the skull. I'm guessing it's very much like Brooks Afro, very firmly rooted. And I also quite enjoy the red and yellow Grand Line Review banner providing the foundation for the Jolly Roger. And along with the blue eyes, Matthew has used all three primary colors actually, which is quite effective when they only have to blend with black and white. From here, we travel to Arsenio Jardim, who has produced this incredibly adorable and stylish Jolly Roger. I don't know why, but I really just love how annoyed this little guy looks. He reminds me of me when I'm reading the comment section of my top five worst devil fruits video, when people tried to tell me that the Hito Hito no Mi will grant a human user enlightenment. That is exactly my face. Plus he has a monocle, what's not to like? Thank you so much Arsenio. Now for something completely different, here is an entry from Tyler Da Big Boy, who has clearly been inspired by the aesthetic of the Arlong Pirates Jolly Roger, and has crafted this funky spiraling dragon with arrows rather than traditional crossbones. Could see it making quite a cool tattoo actually. Elsewhere we have Horst Der the Second, who has produced a skull just casually nomming on the entire world of One Piece. And I wanted to highlight the unique idea that is placing the Grand Line and the Red Line along the crossbones. I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere before. And all in all, this is a great symbol of world domination. And as for another unique idea, I would like to bring your attention to this entry from Sapphire Games, which contains a skull wearing two, count them, two hats. The classic straw hat swagging on the side, but there's also a delightful miniature crown, and the whole thing is adorned by four chopper S hooves. Now we have an entry from Simpleton S Man telling some rather harsh truths, really, using the Patreon logo. And you know what? This may as well be my Jolly Roger, because I currently make a grand total of zero units of dollars on YouTube, and Patreon really is the only way this channel is 
was able to survive. Hence the uh, very nervous smile on the Jolly Roger. So thank you kindly, Simpleton. But back to happier thoughts, we have Sassy Seisho, who submitted two very smiley entries, both of which utilize an excellent red and blue color combination, something I fall back on quite a bit in theater design. But my favorite aspects of both of these designs is just how joyful the skulls seem to be, something that I'd very much like to portray this channel as being. So great work, Sassy Seisho. But now we've stepped into the world of multiple entries and Sassy Seisho was certainly not the only one who submitted more than one Jolly Roger. In fact, we had a couple of people who sent many, many more. The first example of which is Solomon Codes, who submitted five very psychedelic incarnations of his design concept. It's always good to play around with color, although I do very much enjoy the common feature of the YouTube logo being in the tooth of the skull. We also have a series of entries from Beyond Weebs, which are a marvelous set of emoji style Jolly Rogers, very well put together actually. I love the general schmickness of the line art and the limited shading. Simplicity at its best, really. Although my favorite entry from Beyond Weebs is an alternate marine version featuring a world government style Grand Line Review logo on its flags as the crossbones. And I mean, this is just crazy. It's essentially a logo within a logo. My mind is melting. Andre Bento was another candidate who submitted some nice alternate designs, featuring a straw hat that contains the entire world. But Andre also took this a step further by demonstrating how this design would look on business cards, shirts, and even an actual flag, which is actually super cool and really makes me want to look into getting business cards, even though I have next to no use for them. Shirts might be a possibility though. I mean, everybody likes clothing, yeah? In any case, thank you so much, Andre, for your very fun entry. But now it's time to get down to it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have three more entries to present to you all, the final of which is our winner. These are the three designs that I feel fulfilled, the brief the best, and as a result, even though it wasn't in the initial announcement, I would like to award our second and third place finishes with the power of a buster call each, which is the ability to issue me directly with a topic to create a video on. I'll be in touch with you guys on how to claim that power, but first of all, let's find out who you are. In third place, we have... Travis Small, who also submitted a large variety of designs, all of which I like quite a lot, but the one I love most is this little guy here. The skull is joyful, the hair is strikingly similar to my own, and the GLR lettering in the background is superb. It's just so simple in the best possible way. So thank you very, very much, Travis, and I'll be in touch with you about your prize. But for now, in second place, we have... Michael Joachim. Michael has gone for an adventure motif, which I think really suits the channel as we are embarking on a mission to cover everything the One Piece world has to offer. Everything about this is fantastic, although I do have a particular soft spot for the backpack, and it's all capped off by a very inviting skull wink. I hope you're incredibly proud of this, Michael, and I will be in touch with you soon regarding your prize as well. But now it's finally time to unveil the winner of the Grand Line Review Logo Design Contest, and in first place, we have... Amber Red Drawers. I'll be honest, the moment I first laid eyes on this, I fell in love just a bit. This is everything I was looking for and more. It's simple, solid, it's vibrant, and I love the general concept of the skull and crossbones being set against the grand line and the red line. And now I would like to welcome our glorious winner to say a few words. Amber Red Drawers, welcome to the channel. Hi, nice to meet you. You too. Uh, so tell us a bit about yourself and your work. Well, I'm 21 years old and I currently go to college to study something called virtual design. And yeah, I live in Germany. And for my art, I draw both digitally and traditionally. And sometimes I mix the two of them together. And I usually just draw fan art of whatever I like at the moment. And sometimes I draw my own characters as well. And I've also started a webcomic this year. Oh, fantastic. What's that called? Uh, my comic is called The Crystal Core. And it's about uh, a crew of space travelers who find a new ship after their old one has been wrecked on an alien planet. That's very cool. I should probably put a link to that in the description if you go on. That would be really nice. Thank you. You are very welcome. Now, how long have you been reading and or watching One Piece? I think I started watching One Piece when I was uh, about 15 years old in 2012. And at first, I just read the first few volumes and then was really interested in it. So I continued to watch the, man uh, the, the anime. And yeah, later I've decided to always read the newest manga chapters since the anime was going kind of slow. Mm, very, very slow, unfortunately. And do you have a favorite character? Yes, my favorite character is Zoro, and he has been since the very beginning. Absolutely perfect. I am exactly the same. Team Zoro all the way. All the way, yes. All right, well, I have to say I absolutely love your logo, as you well know by the fact that you're here. Could you tell us a bit about what motivated you to come up with that design? 
Well, I first I was just thinking, um, as you said in your video when you were first introducing the contest, you wanted something that was uh, easily recognizable as One Piece. And my first thought was the uh, skull that is in most of the One Piece Jolly Rogers. So I just took that and I wanted to include the grand line since that is the name of your channel. And after that, I just ended up having a layout of the entire One Piece world in the background. And yeah, for the skull, I thought about using using swords instead of bones but that may have been too much and originally I've uh, included little devil fruit swirls on the skull and I also added a little devil fruit stem on top of it in the shape of an R for review and the swirls ended up being a little too much so they're not in the final design and uh, after all I'm quite happy with how it turned out. As am I, I'm absolutely thrilled. I do really love that little devil fruit stem as they are. That's pretty fantastic and I did see some of your original sketches. The swords were, they were pretty damn cool but the skull and crossbones is very nice very schmick and simple i i can't tell you how much i love it enough thank you so much all right and with that i would like to thank the wonderful amber red draws once again if you're keen to see more of her work then please do head down to the video description she is a wonderfully talented artist who i am super super keen to see more of in the future so thank you so so much for this beautifully crafted logo Thank you so much for having me in this video. And that pretty much does it for the Grand Line Review Jolly Roger Contest. Once again, thank you to everyone who entered. Your work was greatly appreciated. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.